Hello, hello. Welcome to Spindle TV in the shop with Lainey. What's happening, guys and girls? I uh, hope everything is going well tonight. Tonight, we are going to uh, finish up the parts and uh, the lid of the V-carve, uh, the V-carve inlay and all on the lid. And uh, we're going to talk about the project, I guess. We're going to talk about everything. <laughs> Uh, welcome, darling, Steve, Darwin, Steve, Bruce, Mike, Kevin, Carl, Jeff, Stephen, Camaro, what's happening, buddy? Uh, Sylvia, and um, I think I saw Ronnie jump in earlier, and uh, Paul Handwork. How y'all doing tonight? Everybody doing well? Good, good, good. Well, before we get into the project tonight... I want to do a little bit of uh, kind of unboxing. Hey, Big Daddy Fish, what's happening, man? A um, little bit of an unboxing on some things, on some, uh, you know, an upcoming project uh, that we're going to be doing uh, um, on Spindle TV, design and uh, in the shop carving type of thing. Let's get into that. Let's see here. The package just arrived today. And, uh, it's not anything exciting. It's not, you know, like something cool from Amazon or anything like that. But uh, it's, uh, you know, nice. It's heavy. All right. So what we got here is a lot of packaging. Holy cow. All right. All right. Come on out of here. All right. We got a nice stack of candle stone. Um, we're going to be doing some lithophanes, guys and girls. We're going to create some designs and some lithophanes. And I ordered some candle stone. Uh, candle stone is very common, or very uh, yeah, common with lithophanes, but it's it's very similar to um, Corian. Uh, and there's another project product out there now that uh, people are using with lithophanes. I don't know what the, I think it's like Valeria. I, I don't know the name of it and all, but uh, this uh, happens to be candle stone. Uh, these sheets are 10 by 12, something like that. Uh, yeah, let me measure. Hold on. 12, yeah, 10 by 12. Uh, come in a five pack and um, uh, I ordered them. Uh, this past week to bring in for an upcoming spindle TV project. We're going to be doing some lithophanes and, uh, and all. And for those of you that don't know what a lithophane is, it's a three dimensional carving in a translucent material backlit. And it kind of creates that black and white photo, uh, realistic photo and everything. So, um, Definitely gonna do that. I'm looking forward to that project. I haven't done a lithophane project on Spindle TV yet, and uh, I was happy to see that uh, that product come in. Now, next week, if you guys want to join me next week, we are going to be on the fourth axis, the Digital Wood Carver's fourth axis. Hey, uh, Crystal and Dean, how you guys doing? Uh, popping in on there, Richard. How's it going? Um, we're going to be doing uh, fourth axis projects like turning. I don't know what the project is right now, but I've got uh, lots of different materials. I got a nice big chunk of, uh, I want to say that's uh, maple burl. Uh, nice big chunk of that. I got another chunk of, oh, can't remember off the top of my head what this one is. And then I got some walnut blanks. I've got all kinds of blanks and stuff for fourth axis turning. Here's a crappy little fourth axis turning I did uh, messing around with kind of like a hollow candlestick type uh, project and everything. And um, fun, but I just did it out of a tree branch. Just grabbed a tree branch off a tree and cut it. <laughs> I needed something quick and easy. Still got the bark on it. But uh, so next week, we are going to do a fourth axis project, whatever it might be. I haven't decided what it's going to be yet, uh, but we're going to design it. We're going to lay it out and we're going to carve it on the fourth axis. So that'll be cool. If you guys want to join me for that, 
we're going to do the design uh, as we always do on Tuesday. And then uh, Thursday, we'll, we'll get out in the shop and make it happen and all. All right, let's get uh, down to the nitty gritty and everything. If you remember uh, this uh, past Tuesday, we laid out the V-Carve inlay uh, project for the lid, the lid of this box. And, um, the female pocket is going to get carved into a piece of cherry wood. And, uh, the male, the male, let me see here if I can get a hold of that male. The male part is going to get carved out of maple. Now I jumped ahead on you guys and girls. Um, Hey Wayne, how's it going, buddy? Uh, I jumped ahead on you guys and girls, and I tried to get some of some of the carving. No, I, I left some of it for us to do during the viewing and all, but um, did some of the carving to get some things out of the way. And one of the uh, carvings I did is this one right here, the male part of the inlay, uh, which is the longest running uh, of of all of it and everything because of all the clearing that it had to do and stuff. And so. Let's see if I can jump back on camera here. So this is the mail. This is a piece of maple here. And so this is the mail cut. And um, cut, cleaned out, got the edges all nice and clean. It's ready to slip into that female. <laughs> that didn't sound right, but it's ready to uh, get glued into that female and, and all. So I got that done. Um, and let me grab two more pieces here. On two of the box parts, on two of the box parts, I went ahead and, um, just on one pin board and one tail board, I went ahead and milled the grooves for the bottom and the divider. So, uh, you know, it was kind of my way of prepping a little bit, but also, testing everything and if we were to I had my box all nice and laid out here uh, on the table but um, the you know testing all the parts making sure everything fits uh, the way that it should uh, and all and uh, that way you know when the box goes together. Let me get it in there. Let me get my joint started here. Oh, Lord of mercy. Get in there. Did I grab the right side? I think I did. Ouch. There we go. When the bottom, I don't want to push it together because I don't want to stress the joints too much. But uh, when everything goes together, that's going to be the bottom. Now, the bottom still has to get carved. We're going to carve that tonight. It's got to get the grooves in there for the dividers. Uh, that's what those uh, side pieces are, you know, those uprights that the dividers are going to come in here. So there's going to be a 16th of an inch kind of cross groove cut into the bottom and everything. I don't want to stress the joint out too much because... You can only dry fit so many times and then it starts to fit loose and all. But I'm real happy with when I, you know, calipered this part, 0.2275, and I adjusted those grooves on Tuesday night. That, um, you know, very nice fit. So, and there, you know, I overcut the, uh, the grooves a little bit. So there's a little bit of play. Now this isn't going to expand and contract. It's, um, plywood but the other parts will and stuff so anyhow so i went ahead and uh prepped that what i have on the cnc table right now is the cherry lid we're going to go ahead and v carve that uh inlay uh female pocket in there and then we're going to get you know that together while we're carving the other parts and stuff um let's see here hi laney is that a 1938 behind you I have the same one and love it. Yes, it is. It is a Supermax 1938 drum sander. Uh, it's uh, one. It's it's. I can't say it's the heart of my shop, but it's it's one of the most used tools in the shop. Um, but yeah, it is a 1938. It's it's awesome. 
All right. So let's see here. I was in St. Lucia last year. How far is that from you? Would you know? Uh, Dean, was that question from me? Or was that for someone else? Let me know if that was for me. St. Lucia. Because I've, even though I've lived in Florida all my life, St. Lucia is not ringing a bell. All right. Oh, that might have been for Overcrafter or something. You guys are talking. Y'all are chatting. Y'all aren't even listening. You're like, okay, we're just seeing what he's doing. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my headphones and then um, uh, switch over to the camera. Let's go over to the table. Let me show you the parts and everything that I have laid out. We'll get this rocking and rolling. We'll get this rock rolling. We'll get something going. One or the other. All right, let's see here. Let's switch over my mic and camera. How y'all doing? Okay, so make sure you can hear me. Uh, so we'll make sure you can hear me and then we'll talk about the setup. So if you can hear me, let me know in the uh, chat area. And I'll move the machine out of the way and then we'll get on with it. Y'all ignore the mess behind me. I need to build some cabinets. You see all that stuff just piled up on the shelves behind me don't make fun of my organizational skills this shop needs some work all right let's get set up over here and then i'll oh let's get set up over here and i'll turn on the other camera and show you what i've got going on here good here all right loud and clear way to go guys all right let's uh switch over to the cnc camera I really need a camera person. All right. So on the CNC, uh, what I've got uh, going on here is I've got the parts laid out. Now, the piece of cherry for the lid is already clamped down and it's ready to do the V carving for the female pocket. Uh, then I've got the base and, uh, this piece of wood is what the two dividers are going to be cut out of. Now these two, I'm going to end up using two sided tape to, uh, clamp secure them to the table, uh, and everything. So, because the bit I have, uh, the bit is going to be clearing the edges, you know, when it cuts and I don't want it cutting into my fence on the table and, and all. So, um, I'm going to double side tape it out away from the fences uh, when it's cutting. And we're getting a little 16th of an inch groove in here. And then we're going to cut out the two dividers uh, completely out from here. Um, so I've got that. I've got some scissors for the double side tape. And then we're going to cut the two final grooves in here. Now, simply for the uh, these cuts, for all the grooves and everything, I'm simply going to be just using an eighth inch straight cutting bit. Uh, nothing extravagant, nothing uh, sexy about it. It's just an eighth inch straight cutting bit. Uh, the male pocket or the male uh, inlay that uh, was cut, uh, there was a quarter inch end mill that did the flat work and then a 60 degree V bit, which is in the router, uh, did the V carve work and everything. Uh, now you'll notice here, see if you can notice that you might be able to notice that, but some of the grooves, you see these grooves and tool marks and all the maple as I was cutting was moving because I was relieving a lot of material from this big old chunk of maple that was there and everything. Um, uh, if I would have uh, prepped ahead of time, I would have milled it down to kind of its finished size because it was a good inch and uh inch and a eighth or something thick uh when i resawed and then planed it down to this size which is not very thick 
Um, but I would have done that, uh, you know, a day ahead of time or two days ahead of time and let it acclimate to the shop and then did any final milling to flatten it out or whatever needed to be done. But uh, while I was carving, you know, and then relieving more and more material, it was wanting to slightly contract. Uh, and uh, you can tell that by uh, where the bit was uh, digging in a little bit deeper in some areas and stuff. But nevertheless, uh, my V carve inlay, it didn't hurt it at all. Um, it's good to go. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and bring the machine back home. Home, home on the range. <laughs> I won't uh, sing to you guys. Uh, first of all, before I go moving the machine, let me get this piece out of the way. The other parts are fine sitting there. They're not going to hurt anything. But that piece, the gantry will push it right off the table. All right, let's bring that back home. And uh, bring it down to Z0. All right, let's get this camera brought down some. Wah, here we go. Look at those camera skills, ladies and gentlemen. Can't even tell that, you know, it was moving all that non-shaking and everything going on. All right. <laughs> Oops, it doesn't do you any good if you're sitting there watching just the front of the laser. There we go. All righty, all righty. Let's uh, So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run this. It's not a very long V card, but it'll give me a chance while that's running to answer any questions you have, talk with you guys and all uh, the grooves, all the grooves on the um, to the pin board and tail board and the bottom. They'll be pretty fast. Uh, just a few minutes if that. And then um, the cutting out the dividers won't be too bad either. So uh, you guys can stick around with me for that. We're, I'm going to try to not make this too long. We're going to watch this and we're going to kind of bounce back and forth between the uh, cam and then, you know, me talking and all, but we'll go from there. And I don't know why I'm looking over here when you guys are over here. How y'all doing? Uh, but uh, I think it's because there's a big screen TV behind it where I can see myself too. And I want to just watch myself because I'm all about that. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So uh, if you have any questions about anything, uh, it could be related to this project. It could be just related to something else. Uh, go ahead and ask them now in the chat and that'll give us something to talk about while we're uh, watching this carve and stuff. Uh, and let me tell you a little bit about the setup before we get to carving and let's switch back to the the cnc cam for a minute Wah. all right so on the setup see if we can move that back just for a second I am starting at the bottom left corner of the material for the Z0. And normally I work off the waste board as my uh, X, I'm sorry, corner for the X and Y0, X and Y0. Normally I work off of the waste board for my Z0. Uh, but uh, when I'm doing a V carve and I'm not cutting through or anything, uh, I set it for the top of the material. Uh, so everything was set. Uh, the X, Y, and Z was all set with the DWC quick set block uh, touching off uh, X and Y and Z. And uh, I set that uh, today about noon. X, Y, uh, I, my X, Y, zero about noon uh, when I was carving, starting these parts and stuff. And it's still the same X, Y, zero because everything references off of this fence. Uh, the only thing I have to do is when I change parts and pieces or bits, I've got to retouch off the Z. Now this piece has already been uh, touched off, uh, Z zeroed out, and uh, let me bring it back to zero. And um, then we'll be all set to go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get a carbon, and I'll talk to you guys. It should, if it gets too loud, 
or anything uh, and you can't hear me, just let me know and uh, I'll uh, s switch it up somehow or another. All right, let's get this bad boy cranking. So right now what it's doing is it's going around and pocketing around the corners and, and mostly the deeper holes on the on the four sides and from there it'll go into the middle pockets and stuff and get the deeper areas and all after it works on the border. Right. <laughs> Let me know if that router is too loud uh, and you guys can't hear me clearly. If it is, we'll work out something different uh, with it and all. But in the meantime, I'm going to try to answer some of your questions. But let me know if uh, this is supposed to be a noise cancellation mic, canceling mic. You guys said last week it was okay. This week it might be a little bit different, but let me know. Um, so, uh, over 60 crafter, we don't have cherry or maple here. Could pine be used for inlays? Sure. Um, I use a select pine uh, from time to time for uh, inlays, and um, it works fine. The select pine, or that's what they call it, you know, like when you get it from the big box stores, Home Depot and Lowe's. But the... Uh, the select pine has no defects or knots and things in it, so uh, it'll work. Uh, there's not a problem with that. Uh, but inlays don't have to be maple. You, what I, you know, typically with an inlay, it's a contrasting material, right? So when when I'm working with cherry or walnut, those dark materials, uh, then yeah, maple's kind of my go-to. Uh, but any light wood, I mean, I could use. Uh, uh, basswood, which I don't use very much. It's got a nice white uh, feel to it. Um, but when I'm working with lighter woods, let's say I was doing a piece of select pine and wanted to throw some inlay in it, um, then, uh, you know, my inlay is going to be a darker material. You know, it could be, um, it's it's kind of a sacrilege. People are going to say, you put maple or uh, you put walnut with pine, like if I did a walnut inlay. But yeah, why not? A dark, I, I need a dark color wood. <laughs> so um uh but yes pine will work just fine now you know there are places online you can actually i'm not a big fan of ordering wood online uh but you can order wood online and have it drop shipped to you it's not that expensive it's not as expensive as you would think and all so uh it's it's not that not that bad at all uh, another good question here is how does the block know where the corner is? Well, when that uh, block is set up onto the corner of the material, um, you bring the router to the X minus side of it and you uh, get it into position. And then we have a function that we run uh, with our DWC quick set. We have some script that, that will run and it will come, it will start moving in the X positive direction and touch off that corner. When it reaches the edge of the block, it'll back away, go uh, Y minus until it can wrap around the corner of the block, and then it'll come and start moving Y positive till it touches the left side of the, uh, the right side of the board, if you will. Uh, once it makes contact with that, then it raises up, moves over the block, and then touches off the Z, and that's all automated. Uh, so it knows the size of the bit. Uh, the size of the bit is programmed in, so it knows the size of the bit, so it can set all the proper offsets when it does the touch off and all. And all. But uh, Charles, it's a, it's an automated process when that corner block's in there. You just get the bit set to its initial starting position, and then you run the function, and it uh, will do the rest. Good question.
And uh, I think Dean jumped in and answered that. Uh, Laney, do you tell it to go and do the pockets first uh, with your toolpath, or does Mach 3 uh, somehow magically do that for, for you? Well, it's not necessarily Mach 3. Um, if we uh, came into the software and everything, um, when we set the V-carve uh, toolpath, Unless I said use the vector start points or use vector selection order in this VCAR toolpath, then it's automatically going to go uh, and optimize the cuts. So all the deep cuts are going to kind of be first. It'll go through and get those deep areas first, and then it's going to come back and do the fine lining detail all the way around when it, when it carves the edges and stuff. So um, what your seeing now if I get back to the camera is um, right now it's pocketing out the deep areas so it's kind of jumping around from one deep spot to another clearing those areas out and then when it's finished then it's going to come back and do the nice fine line work uh, to do all the detail work and stuff so it's all it's kind of an automatic process uh, but in depending on your tool path, if it's a pocket cut, a profile cut and things, you can tell it vector selection order, uh, starting points. Uh, you can pick those starting points by using node editing and different things like that. Uh, and, and just so you know, Dean, I'm not using Mach 3. Uh, the controller software is Planet CNC TNG. Um, the controller software is Planet CNC TNG. That is the motion controller that we use with digital wood carvers. And um, the uh, we used to use Mach 3. Mach 3 has been a pioneer. You know, it's around for been around forever, and you can carve with it with a lot of different machines and stuff, or use it to run a lot of different machines. Uh, we started off with Mach 3, then we ended up migrating over to Planet CNC TNG and Planet CNC's controller board uh, and just found it a little bit more uh, intuitive and user friendly. So uh, nothing against Mach 3. I just don't know anything about Mach 3. It's before my time. Uh, this is called Planet CNC TNG, the next generation. Uh, and uh, I'm a, you know, Generation X. <laughs> so I guess I would be, me and the millennials would be considered next generation, right? Who knows? Um, let's see here. Good question, Dean. Hey, Data Fish, how much time does a large carving need to be under, uh, clamping pressure for the glue to set up? Uh, plus, uh, what is the best glue? I, I use Type Bond 2. Um, I have used Type Bond 2 before. Well, uh, Big Daddy Fish, uh, I am a Type Bond kind of guy. And uh, Type Bond 2 is my go-to. I use Type Bond 3 when um, I'm doing glue-ups of uh, my uh, cutting boards and things because they're going to get more water. Uh, Type Bond 3 is a little bit more water resistant. Uh, and they're going to get washed and rinsed and thrown in the sink and things like that and stuff. So Type Bond 3 when I'm doing my cutting boards. Type Bond 2 for all of my other projects. Not a big fan of Gorilla Glue, uh, especially the polyethylene or whatever, uh, polyurethane, Gorilla Glue, the foams. Oh, my gosh. First time I used that, it was a mess. But uh, the Type Bond 2 raw hides are really good, very fast drying. Um, Type Bond 2 and 3. I've never used Type Bond 1 or anything like that, but 2 and 3 are my go-to uh, in all. And as far as clamping pressure and stuff, clamping, uh, on this inlay here, now I usually... Uh, I'll let it set up for about 45 minutes. It'll it'll set up and be able to handle in about 45 minutes, 24 hours to cure. Uh, but um, usually after about 45 minutes, I'm ready to start kind of working it and uh, getting it um, uh, uh, ready to, to separate the uh, inlay part, the male uh, lid, if you will, the male top waist area uh, from the female. And um, I'm ready to... Uh, move on, uh, but you know, uh, 45 minutes to an hour setup time. Uh, sometimes it'll set up less than that, depending on how much glue it is. But uh, 24 hour cure time, and then of course it cures more and more over a longer span. 
So, good question. Hopefully that answered it. Type on two is, you can't go wrong with type on two. I'm a, I'm a type on two kind of guy. Um, and Tippy Looter is correct if you saw that in the chat. Type on two uh, and give it 24 hours. Yeah, 24 hours for a full cure. Uh, but after about, uh, you can handle it and stuff, light handling and everything. After about 45 minutes to an hour, I let it set up. Um Rodney, uh, been carving hickory. Amazing how nice it carves. Yes. Uh, for those of you that may not know, um, the more dense the material, the better it carves. So with your pines and poplars and cedars, even your oaks, uh, they get tend to get stringy uh, and things. And um, they, they tend to uh, get stringy and the carvings, you know, not as clean more little fuzzies and stuff like that you got to clean up even maple i had a lot a little bit of fuzzies to clean up those little hangers and all to clean up and um it was let's switch back over to me for a second it was uh you know just very simple uh cleaning and scraping i use a wire brush by the way guys and girls i have a wire brush uh, that uh, I take on my parts and I use a wire brush to get rid of all those little fuzzies. Now on this, I don't know how well we can see it uh, up close, but let's see here. Here's a good example. So right in here, you can see a little bit of those fuzzies still remaining, kind of hanging on. And, um, you know, I don't do any sanding. It's an inlay. It's going to get glued in and stuff. But uh, usually a... Um, fingernail and all will kind of uh, clean it up now that lip you're seeing that's where my bit was carving lower than the point two in some areas where it was clearing out because this wanted to move on me and also because uh you know i didn't give it a chance really to acclimate when i milled it down uh today now the um <clears throat> the denser the wood the better it carves it carves very nicely uh we'll take a look at this cherry cherry is a good dense wood it's not you know the densest you know um it's nothing like where's my let me see if i can grab my uh well well I don't know where it's at. I've got a piece of mesquite. Ooh, that's dense. That's like a brick. Um, but, um, you know, it carves uh, very well. Um, your exotic woods, like zebra woods and things like that, they carve pretty good, too. Not bad. But, uh, yeah, hickories. I love carving in hickory. Pecan, too. Pecan's part of the hickory family. All right, let's see here. That was a big old rant about hickory. Um, have you poured color epoxy in the grooves? Uh, no, you know, I just got some epoxy and some, um, pigment, some pigments. Uh, I think it was Dave Garbett. I don't know if he's with us tonight. Uh, but, uh, one of my customers sent me some, uh, pigments and everything for epoxy resin. Because I'm going to be doing a uh, maple river, you know, a river table. Well, I'm going to be doing a river guitar. Uh, and um, it's going to be a pretty cool project. Uh, so he sent me a couple of uh, pearl essence and uh, blue uh, fillers. But no, I've never filled any of my carvings with resin. I would love to. Uh, but um, I, the only resins I do that I work with is when I'm um, stabilizing knots and things in my boards and all when I'm building them all, but I've never done any real big, big pours or anything with resin, and, and I'm about to get into that. And we might do that one night. We might do a carving, and we might do some resin work uh, and stuff. Now, the 60-degree uh, V-bit that I'm using or that's carving right now, uh, that is the uh, white side 1541 60-degree V-bit. Uh, it's a quarter inch, 60 degree V bit. And, uh, that's, we give that bit out as a free bit with our, when we sell machines and stuff, 
and it's kind of my go-to bit uh, in all uh, when I'm doing most carving. But that's a white side 1541 60 degree V bit. I'm afraid of being too aggressive with beads and speeds. Seeing your carve, I see it as more aggressive. How can you tell if your router is being aggressive versus too slow or dull, dulling, uh, you know, the bit unnecessarily? Well, you want a good chip load. So the feed rate times the number of flutes uh, divided by the RPMs gives you your chip load. And uh, let me see here if I can... That's turning off, but you want nice size. I can't, that's not going to learn there, but you want nice size chips coming off there. If you're making fine dust uh, and everything, you, you need to adjust your uh, feed rate or your RPMs and all. Uh, currently, right now, I was running that uh, at just a very modest 35 inches a minute for the uh, feed rate, 25 for the plunge. Now, on larger machines like your four bytes and four by fours, man, uh, we could have been running that thing at a few hundred inches a minute uh, and cranking it out and still got good results. Uh, but um, I'm not too aggressive either, Sherry. Uh, but how, how can you tell? Well, one, uh, if you get burning and this is this this is the same case for hand routing, too. Now, um, it's it's all chip load, how you're feeding that that router, whether you're doing it by hand or with a CNC. Uh, if your bit is burning or discoloring and your material is burning and discoloring, then uh, you you need to make some adjustments. Either uh, if it's a CNC, you need to adjust that feed rate. If it's a um, handheld router, adjust your movement, uh, change your, you know, climb versus conventional you know, moving methods, but also your RPMs play a big role in that as well. Uh, we don't want to burn because heat heat is what doles a bit so if i'm making fine dust and not chips when chips are flying off that thing that's a good thing you know when chips are flying off uh you want nice size chips because heat is getting dispersed away from the bit uh with those chips if i'm making fine dust and everything and and all that dust is you know not flying off it's kind of sitting there and all and heat is staying right around that bit and that bit starting to heat up it'll start discoloring uh, and everything, and uh, pretty soon you're going to start noticing burning on your wood. So um, make sure you're climb cutting uh, or conventional, depending on what you know. Climb is typically your default, but RPMs, feed rate, number of flutes all plays a role. So I'll give you an example: <clears throat> two flute down cut spiral bit, uh, down cut spiral bit, uh, two flute. Uh, I'd probably be running that uh, at 22,500 RPMs, probably about 22,500 RPMs, uh, and running that, uh, you know, anywhere between, uh, you know, 50 to 100 inches a minute. Um, four flute end mill, same quarter inch four flute end mill. Now the flutes are smaller, the gullets uh, in the flutes are smaller. Uh, that bit needs to be turning a little bit slower. So I'll be running that, uh, you know, kind of dividing it up and everything. And I'll be running that about 12,000 RPMs, uh, you know, to uh, adjust for the size of the flutes and all. And then of course, in, you know, uh, changing the feed rate as well, because the chip load is going to be different for that four flute bit versus the two flute bit. Gets complicated when you're talking about chip load and all that stuff, Sherry, uh, just uh, you can hear, you'll start to notice the sound. If you get, if you get chatter, the bit cannot remove the material uh, fast enough to keep up with the feed rate. So slow that feed rate down. Uh, you know, if that bit is flexing, uh, you know, and chattering because bits, even though they're carbide, they flex and you can see it, you know, uh, you, that you'll hear it, you know, when it's carving and everything. And that's, just, that's the bit can't keep up with the feed rate, slow that down. But if a bit is, you know, cutting like butter and everything, but you're, if you're going too slow, you're building up heat, you know, you're building up heat and it's going to start burning your material, burning up your bits and, heat will dull a bit like that you could be replacing bits you know every few years or once a month um or once a week <laughs> and do not use high speed steel bits i'm not a big fan of those um let me get that uh, down there so uh there and i'm not a chip and feed and speed expert now you want to uh you want to see a good video a good test 
uh, for smaller machines and obby machines. Uh, check out Crisscross Crafts, Crisscross Crafts, Chris uh, on YouTube, Chris Cross. I think it's spelled C R I S S. Let me see if I can look up the channel and I'll throw the link in there. He did a speed and feed test for smaller machines because these speed and feed calculators out there in the world, they're for big industrial machines, you know, uh, like Crystal's machine, that four by eight that she's got, uh, the, uh, shop saber. It's a, it's a commercial machine. It's, it's, uh, industrial. So it, that thing has, rapid uh you know uh rates that are outrageous uh you know your operation speeds are a lot different than the hobby which would which would be considered the considered the hobby class units uh which are smaller um so the feed and re speed and feed charts don't really mash up so chris was showing um how different bits uh react to different speeds on smaller machines uh and uh, with different feed rates and um uh, and, and spindle speeds and stuff. And uh, he brought out the microscope and looked at the chips and everything. So let me see if I can pull up that video. And I'll put the link in for you guys. Give me a second here. Uh, what would that be? Chris Cross. Chris Cross. Chris Cross. All right. Almost there, guys. All right. So uh, keep it up with the questions and everything. And um, let's see if I can search my watch history because I just watched it the other day. Feed rates. Okay, evidently it's not in here. Uh, Chris Cross Crafts. Man, I wish he was in here tonight. I wish he was in the group tonight. Um, if I find it, I'll put it in the comment section. I'll put the link in there and check it out. It's a good It's a good little uh, test for smaller machines and all. Good little show off. Um, let's see here. All right, let's get back to it. Let's take a look at what we've got, what we've accomplished so far. Uh, and uh, let's switch back over to the CNC cam. All right, so... Hang tight while I do my fancy dancy uh, uh, camera work here. What? Look at that. Okay. So let's. Now I don't have my dust collection on uh, for the purpose of viewing pleasure for your viewing pleasure uh, and all. So. We'll go from there. Let's move these spacers out of the way. And uh, this is going to be the V-carve cut. Uh, very clean cut. Uh, there's a few little fuzzies in there, right? So those are very easily uh, removed. Exacto uh, knife for um, a fingernail or, or what have you. But uh, they just flake away, um, you know. And so when you have those there, I call them fuzzies. I'm sure there's a technical term for them, hanger ons or what have you, but uh, they just uh, flake away and everything, but uh, very, very clean cut. And um, so let's grab our male part here. And so we have our male and our female uh, the reason why in the VCarve software uh, we have the female design and all, we mirror it 
uh, when we do the mail uh, side, we mirror that design because just like a sandwich, you know, these two things are going to get sandwiched together and you can literally feel it just drop right in and lock into place and everything uh, when um, you're uh, snapped into position. It just locks right in. Uh, it's a nice feeling and all. Now, the uh, female is cut normally with a V-carve uh, to a certain depth, start depth of zero, down to whatever depth you want. This happens to be a 0.2 uh, cut depth. And then the design is mirrored. There's a boundary put around the design. That's what creates that male version. Anytime you have a design, you put a boundary around it and you carve that single line boundary with your design. It creates the male version of the design uh, or, or, you know, kind of opposite version, if you will. And the reason for the mirroring, like I said, because the two parts are going to sandwich together, you know, and uh, when they, when you set the um, part in and everything and it finds its groove once it finds its groove and locks in you're locked in you know and uh it's a nice uh little uh uh fit and so you see that space in between the two parts well when this is all glued up and everything you can run this through a bandsaw uh to cut that male part off you can run it through a bandsaw uh, you can actually, when it's all glued up and after it's glued, you can clamp it back on your CNC and surface off uh, the waist. Uh, just use a surfacing bit and surface off the waist down to your uh, actual project. But don't go down too low. I like to leave a few thousandths of an inch. Uh, I don't go all the way down to the part. You know, I just mill off a majority of the waist and then I'll sand it, uh, you know, orbital sander, whatever, bring it down to its final uh, finish and things. Um, and, uh, so that's another way if you don't have a bandsaw or what have you, you can use a handsaw, you know, uh, a flush cut saw. And, um, let me, uh, see if I can, You can use, ooh, get hung up here. You can use something uh, like a flush cut saw, you know, to uh, saw, you know, separate that part, you know, from the top to the bottom. However, you want to attack it, um, it's uh, up to you. And um, so, yeah, we'll get this, I'll get this uh, pressed in and uh, glued up. And then while that's gluing, we're going to go ahead and set up the next piece. So we'll set those two parts aside. Uh, the next parts I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up for uh, the cuts, the groove cuts on these parts here. Now, I've already marked the inside of my board. Very important that you do that. And I've also marked what's the bottom. So that will tell me on my fence how these register. Uh, same thing, you know, with the, the uh, tailboard inside and then the bottom so it'll tell me you know which parts uh coming in so let me go ahead and uh change over to the eighth inch bit you guys keep asking your questions uh, i will scroll back and get to them uh when i get back in front of the computer now on the digital wood carver uh it's not an automatic tool changer it's a manual tool changer so we're gonna put our little wrench in there to lock the head Break that nut loose. Take that bit out. And from time to time, it's a good idea to take the nut completely off uh, and tap that nut on the table. Get any buildup or any dirt to build up away from inside of those fins and also that collet can grip that router bit. If you ever have problems with bit slippage, uh, and things like that, your bit slipping out of the collet. A lot of times it's due because of the, it's due to the debris that's inside those fins, not letting that collet close up around that bit. Uh, so it's a good idea to um, take it off when you're changing bits all the way off, tap it on the table a little bit and uh, 
get that dust out. All right, so now that I've changed bits, I've got to uh, get my parts secured. I'll go ahead and work with the uh, tailboard first. So uh, the cams that I have, they just fit, you know, uh, in the table uh, in different areas or different configurations. And uh, I have spacers that lock them in. And depending on where I need to be or what needs to be done, look at that spacer's tight there. Just lock that part in and we're good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get the quick set block set up here. And I'm only using the quick set block for the Z touch off. So let's go ahead and reposition the camera. I'm gonna be a master at repositioning cameras here before too long. Now I'm doing a manual touch off. Um, and uh, the manual touch off, I'm using my controller pendant to position the router bit over the quick set block and um, get my quick set block free there. I want to make sure that um, we're sitting nice and flat on there. It doesn't have to be cornered because the X and Y I'm not sitting, but make sure it's nice and flat on there. And then uh, let's get that over. Oops, wrong way. Now I'm going to bring that bit uh, speed down nice and slow uh, for the touch off. It'll stop automatically for me uh, when it's at its point. Now that particular DWC quick set uh, block is a half inch thick right there at the Z touch off point. So in the software Z, I'm just going to type in. 0.5. All right, let's see here. Bear with me while I pull in. Let's see. That is the tail board, correct? Tail board groove cuts. Groove cut. Tail board groove cut. All right, 0.5. Enter. All right, so once I've manually typed in that 0 0.5 in the Z, I can go ahead and rate, I can speed that up now, raise that up. I don't need to raise it up very high, just enough to get my quick set block out of the way, set it to the side, and uh, then I'm good to go ahead and uh, bring it home to that uh, XYZ corner. Now, of course, there's no wood over there on that corner because the tailboard has been cut already, but trust me, that is the corner. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, I've got the file loaded for this one. And um, this is my tail board groove cuts, eighth inch end mill. Uh, everything is set to go. So let's see if I can get a different uh, camera angle for you this time. Oops. You hear all that noise in the background. That's me tripping over. Shit. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. See if we can, right now the router's in the way, but when it raises up and starts carving, you might be able to see that groove cut pretty decently. One of these days I'll get better lighting here in the shop for uh, nice lighting and all. All right, let's give her a go. Now this one won't take very long. And while that's going on, I'll go ahead and ask her some more questions. So John Esther, uh, in reference to the brush, um, bass are still brush. Um, yeah, I 
John, I use a uh, just I think it's steel. I don't. It might be brass. Uh, where is it at? It's in my office. Uh, I was cleaning it while I was setting up the job today or the uh, broadcast, but I think it's brass. Brass. But it doesn't matter. Brass or steel. I the brass is a little bit more flexible. You know, you want to be you don't you want to be mid aggressive, right? You know, you just all we're doing is we're just brushing away those little hangers and stuff, so it doesn't take a whole lot. So brass is a little bit more forgiving and all and everything. So good question. Have you tried cactus juice to stabilize uh, the pine to cut better? No, I never have. I've heard about that, but I've never tried it. Um, Bruce, there's no such thing as scrap in my shop. I do a lot of cutting boards with all the scrap that I have. Um, let's see here. Oh, let's see here. You guys are just having a good old conversation. Let's see here. How about one night a discussion on your game controller hookup? How, how do you do it... Uh, how, how, how do you do? What is needed? What is needed? Well, uh, Tippy, I, um, let me switch the camera over to me. That's, it's doing that final little cut right there and then it'll be done. Let me switch over to my other camera here. Okay. Now I'm always looking at, uh, you know, fun, new, innovative ways to, uh, accessories and stuff and I'm a I'm a tinker so woodworking is my life my professional but for a hobby for fun I have a lot of hobbies for fun and all uh but uh um but one of them is computer programming writing code geeky stuff but uh it is you know websites and all but I also like electronics and so with the game controller, what I was doing was uh, looking how the Arduino board inside and stuff uh, communicates with the controller software so that I could uh, write code and develop my own controller for CNC machines. Um, as the uh, prototype, is just a PlayStation controller. Anybody can go out and spend 19 bucks at Walmart for this and uh, it you know but uh, I'm, I'm working on a digital woodcarver uh, game type controller so let me tell you what all this does so uh, the front buttons here this zeroes out uh, X Y and Z this brings my router back to X Y zero so those buttons have a function uh, my X movement is uh, side to side Y is here my diagonal movements are here uh, for X, Y, uh, you know, negative or positive and all. Uh, Z up and Z down are here. And then my control speeds, my feed rates are left and right. And then for running a program, I can turn the spindle on with this start button here. And then running a job over here, running a job, start, stop, pause, and emergency stop. So everything is kind of built into one. And uh, basically... You can set up your keyboard shortcuts, right? Keyboard shortcuts to uh, control the machine. Uh, even with a number pad, uh, a USB number pad, you can control your machine with your keyboard, with a number pad, with a controller like this, you know, anything. And all you need is what's called a key mapper uh, program that uh, turns these joystick operations and everything into a particular key press on the keyboard. And then you set your keyboard shortcuts in the settings of the software and you're good to go. Now, you know, uh, giving away all the trade secrets, I won't be able to sell any now if I ever do develop one, but, um, 
uh, $19 at Walmart. It's a PS game controller. I'll even, it's called a power, a, uh, 19 bucks. So, uh, if you, if you want, um, I can, uh, walk you through setting one up tippy cheese, man, taking the money. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, that's all it is. It's just a game controller. Um, all right, let's see here. So that was the discussion, Tippy. That's about as good as it's going to get. <laughs> uh, what bits do you, do you use for the mail part? Uh, I used a, oh, I used a quarter inch upcut spiral bit and uh, the sixty degree V bit that's on the machine, uh, the white side fifteen forty one. That was the two bits that I used for the cutting the mail part out. Now the one thing that you have to understand, okay. The one thing you have to understand when you're cutting that male part out, remember our female start depth was zero cutting down to 0.2, right? That was the female cut. The male cut was starting at 0.18 cutting down to 0.02 for that total of 0.2 cut difference. So this bit is taking nearly the full cut, you know, and when you have, depending on how dense your material is, you know, it's, it's eating through some material. Um, the, uh, there's no pass steps. It's going to go down to that 0.18 and that's where it's starting from. And if, even if you set the pass step to a 32nd, it's still, you know, it's only cutting from that start depth to 0.02, which is a 32nd is 0.03, 125, right? So there's no passes. No, it's just a full cut. So you got to be mindful of that. Make sure you got good clamping and everything because that bit is, you know, it's not an aggressive cut. You know, I could take a quarter inch cut with this, but it's, you know, it's pretty close to that. Um, but that's the two bits. Let's see here. <clears throat> You need to use the same bit for both pocket and inlay. Yes, Michael Bell is exactly correct. You need to use the same 60 degree V bit or 90 degree. It doesn't matter now. It doesn't 60, 90, 30, 45, whatever. As long as it's the same bit for the male and female. Uh, so it could be any other bits and everything. Um, have you ever heard, uh, you ever seen or heard much of the muscle chuck for routers uh, make changing bits simple and fast? Yes. Uh, most of the digital wood carver users, uh, there's a there's a group of them that love the muscle chuck. Uh, when the muscle chuck goes on, uh, it, it you lose about three eighths of an inch of cutting height and everything because of it. Uh, and uh, once it's set on, I mean, it's it's quick and easy for changing bits. Uh, muscle chucks are not cheap; they're a little over a hundred and something dollars uh, for them, and they have them for water cooled spindles. They have them for routers, all different size. You they, they have a compatibility chart to tell you what you know what chuck muscle chuck you need for what. Uh, I had a customer give me one as a gift, um, and I ended up re-gifting it to another customer that wanted one. And I said, "Hey, I've got one I've never opened, never used. Uh, you can have it." And I sent it to him. Then I looked up and, uh, you know, I was looking up uh, muscle chuck information for somebody and saw how much they were and went, damn, should have kept that one. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, the person that really wanted a muscle chuck and uh, I had one that I wasn't using, it was given to me. I'm not a fan of them, uh, but uh, they're, they, you know, for people that might not be able to use two hands uh, for changing bits or, uh, you know, uh, the carpal tunnel or whatever, you know, the muscle chuck, uh, one tool, it's like a little T wrench Allen key for changing the bits is uh, pretty good, you know, but, uh, uh, I'm not a, I'm not a fan personally. That's just personal. Uh, it's, and there's no reason, you know, uh, like I said, I got it, never opened it, never used it and all. So I don't know if I'd like it or not. I just know that, uh, I don't, I'm just fine changing bits the way I am. Now, when uh, we come out with our new machine with an automatic tool changer uh, sometime, hopefully this year or the beginning of next, then I might think about an upgrade. <laughs> um, you know, I think Rockler has them uh, has them make Z0 out easy too. Probably so. I'm not sure. Let's see here. Yeah, even, uh, who was it? Uh, Camaro, next best thing to automatic tool changer. So, yeah, the muscle chuck. Um, <laughs> uh, 
So you know where I can get some cabinets for my shop? Yeah. Uh, I need uh, insulation, walls, and all, and then cabinets. But uh, we might we might talk uh, when I build the, the new building because I'm definitely going to put cabinets and counters and things in there. We could definitely talk there. But this shop, there's not enough room for cabinets on the wall. Uh, I do, I put shelves in between studs, as you can see the one up here, just, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Any other questions before we move on? Laney, do you ramp into the board or just plunge? Uh, Cecil, 90% of the time I'll use a ramping, a ramp, uh, and everything, uh, on the cuts and all, but on this particular one, uh, it's only cutting three sixteenths of an inch, uh, deep. Uh, I'm just plunging. No ramps on it. So he does play games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I use the controller for the CNC. I've never played a video game. Um, you know, uh, the last video game I played, uh, Crystal and Guys and Girls, uh, Qbert, Donkey Kong, Frogger. That tells you a little bit about my age. If you know what Qbert is, give me a thumbs up. Um, would a toothbrush work or does, no, uh, yeah, Darwin, a toothbrush will work just fine. A nice, good, stiff bristle toothbrush will work just uh, just good. Uh, the brass brush, uh, you know, is a little bit uh, denser, so it has a good scraping and all, but you kind of want a little bit of a gentle touch uh, from time to time on certain things. So uh, toothbrush, is, we'll, we'll give, it, give it a go, man. It works just fine. Um, and yes, me too, Dave Garbett, uh, sanding mops. I have a sanding mop, uh, that I chuck up in my, either on my lathe or, uh, in my drill press, crank it on and I'll just run my part under there and use a sanding mop. Um, I haven't put a sanding mop on my CNC yet. Uh, you know, they have some sanding brushes that you just throw it in your CNC and you could do the sanding right there on the CNC and stuff. I haven't done that yet, but though. Uh, let's see. Okay. It looks like I got through all the questions. Um, uh, yeah, I had an Atari. I did have an Atari. That's funny. All right. So let's go ahead and, uh, let's switch over to my stand up cam. I got so many cameras now. Whoa. Fancy dancy. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, change the uh, bit and everything is fine. Don't need to do anything with the bit. So all I need to do is move my router out of the way and change the part. Um, the parts, I'm pretty confident on their thickness and everything. Uh, I don't necessarily need to touch off the Z again. Um, you know, but uh, it's a good idea. Don't, don't. Don't get too cocky. It's a good idea to change the, or to uh, retouch off the Z anytime you're changing parts and things. But uh, I'm pretty well confident with my spoil board setup and, um, and everything that, you know, the two parts are very much equal. And, excuse me for a minute. <laughs> the, uh, I could probably just go on without touching off the Z. But I'm going to anyway. I want to lead by example. <sighs> Sorry if you hear that blowing in the microphone. I'm not blowing y'all kisses. I was just blowing dust and dirt out of the way. Now it's important to get the uh, parts um, and everything in. You know, make sure they're up against that fence. Make sure they're in place and stuff. Make sure you got the, you, if you make pencil marks, I use pencil marks because I'm so forgetful uh, what what side we're cutting, you know, what inside and everything and uh, what's the bottom, what's the top. You know, little pencil marks, little things that will remind you um, are important. All right. So once again, uh, just to show you that I'm not just – Moving around, making it look like I'm touching off. Let's switch back to the CNC camera. All right. So I've got the quick set block back on there. And, uh, oops. I want to go down there. I want to go down over here. Wasn't paying attention to what button I was pushing. All 
All right, so I'll get it down close and then I'll turn the speed down. And I want a uh, nice, make sure that you're not, you know, make sure you're sitting on that thing and uh, the, um, my wire keeps moving it. Make sure that it's sitting down nice and all. And then it would help if I turn the speed up. And I'm just going to come down nice and slow. It'll stop automatically, but I want a nice kiss off. Now, in the new TNG software version 2, um, they have a double touch uh, setup that you can do where it'll go down touch, come back up, come down and touch at a slower speed. And uh, All right. So bear with me a second here. And this is the pin board file. Open the pin board groove cut. That's also important. <laughs> Making sure you load the right file. Man, I did that uh, one time. Uh, that carving, it was a good uh, two hour run. And there was a tool change in the software. You know, it stopped, came home, uh, and I raised it up, changed bits, and uh, touched it off and uh hit start without uh changing the file and luckily when i sat down in front of the computer and looked at the design in the computer the toolpath i went oh that's the wrong one and i hit stop and it wasn't too bad it was salvageable but uh yeah you don't want to make that mistake so make sure you load the right file all right so we're going to go ahead and uh, let's bring that back home all right and uh we'll give that one a go Now this one is starting outside the groove, uh, and it's going to cut all the way to the end uh, in that opening. So, see if I can. So to just go make that little T. All right, so uh, any other, let's see here, not a fan, why not, Lainey, specifically? All right, Dean. Um, Dean, not a fan of them, why not specifically? Uh, because I am very capable of changing bits. Uh, with the two wrenches and uh, to lose one wrench you make it a one tool changer uh, versus the three eighths of an inch uh, Z height that I lose in my cutting capabilities with it I'd much rather uh, maintain my cutting height capabilities uh, keep that three eighths of an inch and use a second wrench you know uh, that's my that's my specific reason has nothing to do with its performance. They perform great. Uh, a lot of people swear by them, love them, uh, and everything. They're, you know, I've heard nothing but great things about them. But if that one wasn't given to me as a gift, I wouldn't spend over a hundred dollars for a, you know, for it for sure. And again, that's just me. I'm, 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 I'm ignorant that way, and uh, I'm a, I'm a bit of a set in my old ways. You know, I like maintaining my height so I don't have to sacrifice that height uh, I've only got a five inch Z height on the 2440 so every bit counts you know every bit of every inch counts and that three eighths of an inch means something to me uh, and just going from two tools to one tool it's not worth it that's my specific reason all right I'll get off that rant um, What muscle chuck do I need for the Ed? Go to musclechuck.com, click on compatibility, uh, and uh, look up your router by the model number, and it'll point you in the right direction. They have probably about 20 different models, uh, coarse or fine threads, this or that, this router, that router, this spindle, that spindle. Uh, look up your model number in the compatibility on the uh, musclechuck.com, and uh, you're good to go.
<laughs> All right, any other questions, guys? Now's the time. We're gonna uh, we got two more cuts after this. After this groove cut with the eighth inch bit, uh, I'm gonna do the double side tape. Uh, tape down the bottom panel and uh, get those grooves cut. There you go. That one's done. So easy peasy. Tommy McDonald, don't uh, don't get mad at me for using your phrase there, but but uh, very simple, very easy for that. So now all four parts are cut. Um, All four parts are cut with their grooves uh, and uh, we're ready to go. So those are done. So the box itself, all the groove cuts are finished. It's ready for, uh, almost ready for assembly. All right, so now I'm gonna take uh, and let's turn, let's back the camera up a little bit and jack it up a little bit higher. So y'all can see what in the world I'm doing. Thanks for sticking out around with me, guys and girls. What do we got? Uh, 55 people hanging out with me tonight in the shop. Uh, love it. <clears throat> if y'all have any questions, uh, this is the perfect time because I sure love to talk. <laughs> if you can't tell. Um, and uh, let's grab these. I got spacers because sometimes my cam hole position uh, doesn't you know, depending on the size of the part, it requires a few little spacers to, um, to plant those parts down. Now I'm not using dust collection, so right now I'm just blowing the dust and everything out of my way uh, so I can work. And um, uh, then I'll be meticulously sweeping the floor later because there's a lot of sawdust on the floor right now. That maple mail part really did a number. Okay, so let me find my uh, two-sided tape. We're going to start with just the base part. And uh, we'll make that the inside of the box. So... And this is just Sure Tape, uh, SH. You are sure tape from Lowe's. No big deal. It's just double side tape. There's a lot of good double side tapes. Fast Cap has a really good double side tape. Uh, Lowe's, uh, I get the sure tape. Sometimes the sure tape, uh, you know, gets a little uh, gummy and things like that. Uh, you know, it's it could get messy. Uh, if you do use it, your bit's going to, you know, we're going to be cutting through this material and uh, the bit's going to be cutting into it. Uh, be sure to take some alcohol or something, clean off that bit or some bit cleaner and all because of that glue residue, uh, you know, that gets onto the bit. You don't want to, um, you don't want that build up on your bits, nice clean bits. So resin pitch, especially if you're carving pine uh, and things like that. Now this is just a very simple double side tape. Stick and pill, stick and pill. Um, it's got kind of a reinforced netting. It's all right. It's not, you know, it's not the best double side tape. Now there's also the painter's tape and CA glue method. But uh, when I, you know, I don't, uh, I don't have any CA glue right at the moment. I'm all out. So I'm not using that method. So I'm sticking with the sure tape. Now I'm going to just throw this on here, right? I don't want it up against my fence. Okay. Don't want it up against my fence uh, because the bit's going to be cutting past the parts. Uh, so what I'm going to do is uh, because my X, Y, zero is here, right? I am going to use the fence. And that's the great thing about these fences and all. Uh, I am going to use the fence. Get that stuck down. Right. Okay. And then I'm going to just take and pop my fence out. Lord of mercy. Hold on a second. Do not, uh, do not go anywhere guys. Hold on a second. I need, uh, I need a, uh, uh, what do I need? What do I need? I've got a tool for this. Standby. Oh, 
Okay, I'm coming on. All right, I'm back. Okay. The um, it's not it's not like a specific tool. It's just a screwdriver. Set that aside. Those are tight. Did a good job when I made that sucker. Man, I wish I had my actual tool for this. I got a little tool that fits perfectly up under there. Now I got to make little dents on the outside of my fence, which is okay. It's not on the inside. Woo! Lord! All right, so now my bit is clear to be able to cut that groove. Then I'll pop those fences back in temporarily, uh, put the other part on and cut that. But let's go ahead and touch off the Z on this one. Definitely got to touch off the Z. Now, I can't use the quick set block for this because uh, it's got uh, it's got a lip on the end, right? So I could use the touch sock and touch off on this here, but I'm simply just going to use our touch tool, the touch tool. Uh, it works just the same. All right, let's get back into place here. Bom, bom, bom. Turn that speed down nice and slow. Not that slow. Okay. Once it uh, makes contact with the touch plate and go ahead and now that touch plate is ten thousandths of an inch thick so i'm just going to manually type that in now i could do an automatic touch off and everything um but it's just as easy for me to i like manual touch off you have more accuracy uh and repeatability and stuff uh, i love the automatic touch off when i'm using the quick set block but not with the quick set uh touch plate or not quick set touch plate not with the touch plate all right Let's go ahead and uh, get this camera set back up. Open. Let's see here. Let's switch over. Let's uh, get onto the screen here for a minute so you can see what I'm doing here. So here's my files for the dovetail box. And uh, this is going to be the bottom panel uh, cut. Okay, which is simply that cross right there. Uh, you guys, girls can see that. All right. And uh, let's go ahead and run a little side-by-side -side action there. And uh, I'll bring it home. Okay. That's a beautiful thing. Make sure that all of my... Hold on a second. <laughs> I've got a good place for this. It's right here. I don't know what the hell I'm doing, wrapping it around cables and stuff. There we go. <laughs> I had a play. I had to put my touch plate away. All right. So let's go ahead and um, <coughs> excuse me. Run this. Now this is going to be just a sixteenth of an inch cut, little pass step. All right, what do we got here? Do you remove your laser center beam when you hook up the laser burner or something else? Uh, how's your six watt mounted? Well, uh, in my with my old laser, uh, my la uh, the old laser guide. This is the new one, 2020 laser guide here. Uh, the old laser guide, my laser mounted right to the front of it. Um, my lasers at the digital woodcarver shop I'm getting a new module put in it right now uh so i just got the new laser guide and uh, i haven't set up a mount for it but no i will not remove that from the front that's zeroed out on the center of my bit uh i will not move remove the front i will mount my laser uh i'll make a custom mount for my laser uh to go off the front of that good question 
What's the latest version of TNG? Uh, the latest version of TNG is... Um, Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I went to check it while I was running. Um, the latest version of TNG is 03 something of 2020. 03, 24, 2020. Now, Ed, if you're a digital woodcarver customer and you're running TNG version 1, uh, which is the 2018.9.17 version, do not update to V2 until you speak with me or until you go to the digitalwoodcarver.com website and download the, the setting files for version 2 because version 1 setting files are not compatible with version 2. Uh, so the version 2 setting files for Digital Woodcarver machines is on our website on the support and downloads page, but don't upgrade your TNG software until you have those files uh, downloaded on your computer or else you're going to be down until you do. Follow the video. There's a video on the support and downloads page. All right, so that one was done. Quick and simple, easy, peasy, breezy. All right, let's get back to it. We're going to change uh, that board again. Do our last little panel cutout. And, um, yeah. All right, so a few little fuzzies that need to be cleaned up. Now, that double side tape is aggressive. Holy camoly. Hold on a second. I do not want to mess up this piece. There we go. It's just that initial that initial thing and the thing you know the double side tape here uh, it's okay but from time to time it tends to leave uh, residue behind so you, you know you have to do some cleanup of that but not too bad all right so there's our groove cut a little bit of cleanup needs to be done a little brushing uh, to uh, clean that up but there's our part now Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to put this, I'm going to hold this up in front of the camera. I want you guys to tell me uh, what's wrong with that picture. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with that picture is... Uh, when I resized my box bottom this afternoon, getting ready and everything, uh, when I actually measured the size of the box bottom and resized it in the software, um, I extended these this leg out to go for the new length. The height wasn't bad, but what did I what did I not do correctly? I didn't center that middle groove, right? So. It's not centered. It should be over here. And that's uh, that's a design issue. And I know exactly what I did because when I measured this new piece, the length and everything, and I cut it down and all, I went into the design and I changed the design size uh, in the software and uh, extended my little rectangles out here but forgot to move the middle one to the center of the new size. Yeah, Lainey, that was a brilliant move there, bud. So that's all right. I just got to make a new bottom. <sighs> Live and you learn. Everybody makes mistakes, even the best of us. Nothing wrong with a little mistake from now on. And then. All right, let's get this uh, bottom part cut out because I know this one's right. <laughs> Oh, what a goofball. Can't believe I did that. But uh, you know what? It happens. I got plenty of this material. I always have backups. So. And that's obvious. 
I don't know why I didn't catch it in the design. That's obvious. Obvious. It should have jumped out at me and bit me in the butt. Obvious, obvious, obvious. All right, so let's get this. Oops. Back around there. Get this into position. Secure it down. And do I have to? Jesus Christ. I didn't put them in that tight this time. This one always wants to fight me. It's a tight hole. <laughs> there we go. All right. That's what I love about this versatile waste board. It's easily adaptable. Okay. So um, let's get it touched off. Man, I can't believe I did that. Doesn't that just kick you in the butt after you spend so much time, you know, getting things just right and you make one little mistake. But it's okay. It was a piece of plywood. It's not it's not like I screwed up the V curve inlay or something like that. That that would break my heart. Now if you'll notice, uh Tippy, I'm using my regular controller. Uh, I switch back and forth between the two. It's just whichever one's closest to me. Oh. All right. So this file is the... This file is the dividers... And they're right. I know they're right. So I'm not going to sweat that one. But man alive on that. Um, can't believe I did that. All right. Uh, got everything zeroed out there. Let's go ahead and get off the touch plate. And... Uh, We'll give that one a cut. Let's bring it back home. You don't have to bring it back home. You can just hit start. That's the first thing it does in the G code is it goes back home. Uh, but uh, I do anyway. All right. What am I missing? Y'all Y'all are having a good chat about stuff. Not centered, not centered. Everybody caught it. Yeah. And <laughs> you have a big hammer. <laughs> That's why we have scrap wood. Yeah, I have a uh, another piece of that. Uh, should be. Uh, yeah, I still have enough piece. What kills me is is uh, the part that I'm cutting right now was uh part of the leftover that i had and i said oh, i'll just make this oversize uh for these two dividers if i knew i was going to screw up i'd have been a little bit more conservative with that piece <laughs> all right stand by one second ladies and gentlemen You see the uh, what kicks you in the <laughs> uh, it happens. All 
All right, so I'm going to switch back over to my camera for just a second while that's cutting out. And um, so what kicks you in the groin sometimes is, you know, I wasn't thinking ahead and I had plenty. I've got a lot of, there's going to be a lot of scrap out of this piece that's getting cut. Uh, and I said, oh, you know what, I'll just rip it off to this wide and that'll be fine. I'm one inch short on the width of this piece here. Not a problem. I can run and go get more. Not a big deal. But if I couldn't or if I didn't want to, that bottom lip uh, that's going around the bottom, there's a, uh, a reveal under the bottom of the box. And, you know, so what uh, I wanted to be lazy about it, I wanted to be lazy about it. I could fill this in, sand it flush, put felt in here, whatever, who knows. But I could turn it over and cut the grooves properly. This would be on the bottom, but there is a bit of a you know, reveal there that, uh, you know, I could uh, glue another piece to that bottom side when it's in this groove. I could, you know, easily get it fit another piece in there if I wanted to. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to cheat it. I could cheat it, but I'm not going to. I'll go get another piece. Huh. Just means I can't do the assembly. Dadgum it. Dadgum it. Don't you hate when that happens? All right, let's switch back to uh, the CNC cam so y'all don't have to see the disappointment in my eyes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just, it'll, it's okay. It's not a big deal. We can... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I could, uh, I could, uh, make up for it very easily if I wanted to. Um, I could take a razor knife out of this scrap wood that doesn't fit and, uh, I could cut, uh, a cross, same size as the cross that I cut out and I could inlay it into that groove that I cut, uh, and, um, glue it up. And I'm very good at making seams disappear. Uh, I could make it, you know, I got enough uh, skill to make it look like it never even happened. And then I could recut those grooves. Um, and, uh, and all very easily. And I think I may do that. I might inlay a couple of strips into that groove uh, and then just recut it. Yep, yep. All right, so we are moving along. Um, you could uh, you could do the assembly and pretend it fit. Just an idea. Well, I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, the only thing is, I just can't get the middle dividers in, and I do not want to put the box together if I can't get the middle dividers in because everything is once it's locked in, that's it, it's done. Uh, but what I could be doing, I'm sitting here wasting precious time. I should have been gluing up the darn. Uh, Inlay. Now, when you guys and girls cut through, and I usually touch off on the waste board, not the top of the material, and you noticed, uh, if you noticed, I zeroed out on the um, what am I trying to say to you? I zeroed out on the top of the material, which is fine. That's what I set the job up for. But before I un pull this thing off the table the first thing I'm going to make sure is that I did cut all the way through my material if I didn't if I gauged my size wrong because I my cut depth was 0.2275 which is the thickness of the material but if I did not cut all the way through then I'm not going to peel this off so let me get a little bit of air action going on here see what I've got get some of the sawdust out of the way Move that router out of the way. Let's 
So before you go removing, uh, you know, your material and all, double check those things and stuff and make sure that uh, that you cut all the way through and all. Okie dokie, okie dokie, tokie dokie. All right. Let me clean up my little fibers. And let's get on back over to me now. Let's see. You guys are exhausted though. Um, so I got my two dividers here. Uh, little fibers and stuff. Just uh, clean up those fibers. They just brush right off and everything. I don't know if you can see that or not. But, um, you know, not a bad looking part there. Now, let's get those fibers off. Sorry, I keep forgetting I have a mic next to my mouth and I'm blowing on things. All right, so now these two parts, these two parts are designed to fit together to create the dividers. Okay. And um, they're just, uh, and for those of you, you know, I mean, it's, it literally it's uh, center cut all the way down to the center of the part. And uh, they just interlock like so. Okay. So that was a success. <laughs> the bottom wasn't, but that was a success. And, uh, here, let me see. Where is the bottom? Let's see here. Let me get my get my groove on. So, oh, that 16th of an inch doesn't hold it very well. Bear with me a second. Probably should have went a little more than the 16th of an inch, so it sat in there pretty good. But that's all right. Well, anyway, if the uh, part... <laughs> if the part wasn't off center... We'd be, you know, what are we, what are we shy here? A uh, little bit there. What are we overhanging there? A little bit there. You know, if I wasn't off center, I'd be perfect. <laughs> Nuts, folks. Nuts. All right. So here's what we're going to do. So that's all the cuts. Um, what do we get at? Hour 43 minutes uh, for this tonight's class. So here's what we're going to do. Let me get rid of that. Were you able to see anything I was just showing you with that screen in the way? Are you able to see uh, the, the parts I was showing you? So those parts fit together like that. And, of course, if this was centered, you know, but I'm overhanging on one side versus the other. And um, not a big deal. Uh, easy to fix. And then they all go together in the box. It'd be nice and pretty. Um, the one thing that I can do is, let's see here. Let's see how good my, let's see how good I did actually, if I would have got the box together. Bear with me a second. Now I'll tell you what, I probably, you know what I should have done? Okay, I can admit one thing. One thing I should have done is given myself a little bit of an allowance I didn't give myself too much of an allowance on that one. It's a perfect fit for the boxes, but I sh on the bottom, same plywood and stuff, I should have given myself a little bit of an allowance because that sucker is a tight to get into that 16th of an inch groove. It's a tight damn fit. All right. So let's see here. If... If everything, you know, I got to get down into my groove there. Where are we at here? If everything would have been lined up, that would have been a, that would have been a good fit. Everything would have been, uh, everything, 
there, except for I do need to give myself an allowance. So that's a good thing to now I can recut that part, but everything fits in here perfectly uh, in lid. So here's what I'm going to do. We're not going to do another live class. Um, where uh, I'm just going to assemble the box and I will post finishing pictures, finished pictures of it uh, and everything in the Spindle TV user group on Facebook. And then I'll show it off next Tuesday and stuff as well during the live class. I wanted a little bit of a more climactic ending, but uh, that's where we're going to end tonight because I, I just can't put the box. I don't want to stress the joints anymore and I can't put the box together until I get that bottom fixed. Um, cut a new groove, fill in the old one, filter flock, finish the inside. Yeah, exactly. Uh, flocking would be next, nice. but, um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish it up, uh, and, uh, I'll post pictures of it in the, on Spindle TV, Spindle training videos, Facebook page, and the Spindle training video subscribers group. I'll throw it in there as well. All right, everybody, any last minute questions? Uh, did I miss any questions? Let me scroll back up just a little bit. See if I missed any, man. What kind of plywood is that, Laney? What kind of plywood is that? What kind of plywood is this? This is, um, it is uh, craft ply. So it is, uh, how many layers is that? One, two, three, four, Five. It's not, not, you know, nothing that big, uh, five veneers, but it's not a very, you know, the, they're pretty thick veneers. I don't know if that's focusing or not, but, um, uh, but it's, uh, it's craft plywood and, uh, quarter inch thick. Joanne fabrics, baby. Um, I have, uh, I have it in different sizes. I like it. Uh, I like it. It's, uh, I like it better than the, the plywood, quarter inch plywood that I would get if I went to a big box store like Lowe's or something. Uh, when I want really nice plywood, like uh, for making model planes and stuff like that or what have you, uh, then I'll use a, an actual aircraft plywood, which is uh, uh, really good stuff, but expensive. But craft plywood, that's all it is, Dean. Craft plywood is what it's called. Joanne Fabrics, quarter inch. It's really nice stuff, too. Nice and flat. Just don't have enough of it. It cuts very nice uh, um, on the table saw and stuff. All right, let's see here. Scrap plywood. That's what, <laughs> what kind of plywood is that, Lenny? Scrap plywood. Just leave an extra groove if someone asks. Uh, say, that's okay. It's groovy. There you go. It's groovy. Um. Start over. Let's see here. Champ for the edge. Uh, uh, yes. Yep. Uh, champ for the edge of the plywood where, where uh, we were talking about Camaro. Camaro was throwing out a tip there uh, where I did not give myself an allowance. Uh, I could slightly chamfer the edge very slightly and it'll pop right in. Uh, excellent. Uh, good throwing that out there, uh, Stephen. Awesome. Because uh, a lot of people don't know that. That's good. Very, very good, man. Steven's a cabinet guy. He knows about putting that shit together. He's like, hey, if it don't fit, champ for the edge a little bit, man. It'll go. It'll go. Trust me. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, I don't think it's a birch. I mean, it, it might be a birch grade of plywood, uh, but um, it's, uh, it's, I mean, it's a really uh, decent plywood. The veneers are real thick. They're not, it's not like a thin, shitty veneer and both sides are quality in the same thickness on the veneers there's only five though five layers uh but uh you know like birch regular birch that you get from lowe's they have a good layer good side and then a just a junk side and i usually use the junk side it's actually prettier sometimes but i like this because it's you know other than my little water stain right there but yes yes um all right well listen I am sorry that uh, I made a mistake, but it happens. We all make mistakes, and that's all part of being live. Uh, but I will show off pictures of it. I'll put it together and everything. Uh, that'll give me a chance to glue up the uh, B-carve inlay. 
And it's guys and girls when you're, you know, hey, uh, how do you do the V-carb inlay? All right. Uh, we're not going to talk about the V-carb inlay again, but um, you got your metal parts. Uh, I glue both sides. Uh, I put glue on both sides. Not, I don't soak it, you know, flood it. I got a little rubber glue brush. Uh, let me show you my glue brush. Hold on a second. I got a little tight bond glue brush. Look at that. It's got a little spatula for spatula and on glue. It's got a little rubber silicone brush for gluing on. And then it's got this rib for spreading out glue when you're doing edge gluing or something and everything. It's a handy dandy little glue brush. So, um, but uh, I will uh, glue both the male and the female. Uh, they are a mirror image of each other. <laughs> which side's which? Okay, that's the side. Yeah. Uh, they're a mirror image of each other. And when the parts, when they snap in, right? I mean, when they drop in, they are, it's amazing. You know, I mean, it, you just can't, it locks in so beautifully. And I mean, here, I wonder if I could, I wonder if I can show. Uh, when these parts, how can, how can we show this? When they're when they when they when they just fall into place and just I mean they locked they lock together, you know, and it's just oh it's so satisfying how well it fits together, right? And it leaves a little groove, just perfect enough. Uh, you overcut the maple side a little bit, you know, bandsaw, handsaw. Throw it on the CNC, have the CNC surface it and everything. But man, oh, it's it like for instance, if I were to take this and turn it and turn, let me get it lined up here. And I don't know if y'all heard that. Here, wait, hold on. Let me turn on my other microphone. Y'all hear it lock in. Microphone mania. My other microphone's better at this. Testing one, two. Hello. All right. I'm such a goober. I changed the speakers to the microphone and not the microphone to the microphone. Okay. Anyway, what I was saying, I was ranting about how great this is. How funny is that? Oh my God. I'm so sorry. I changed the speakers to my microphone and the microphone I didn't change. Um, what I was saying is, is when those two parts, when they lock, together i don't know if you heard that click but when they lock together it's it's a beautiful thing it just drops right into place you can just hear it just kind of drop right into place and and uh you know can i do it again one-handed can i do it again one -handed? There we go. uh when it drops into place it's good to go so very satisfying. I'll get all that glued up. It's a matter from there. V-carb inlay is very simple. Cut the two pieces apart. Once it dries, 
mill the top off if you want. Don't go all the way down to your part. If you're going to use your CNC, you can use your CNC like a planing sled uh, to surface that maple down and leave yourself a little bit and then finish up with uh, some hand sanding, orbital sanding and stuff like that. Um, uh, I'm going to end up using a bandsaw. Uh, I'll cut the two parts, uh, pieces apart and everything. And uh, then we'll recut that bottom, get that box back together, and I'll post pictures. All right. If I learn how to use my microphone instead of my speakers, you ought to have heard that the first time I said it. All right, guys and girls, I really appreciate you. Thanks for joining me in the shop once again this week. Next week, fourth axis. So the week after that, lithophanes. That'll be an exciting one, uh, especially when we do carve that. We can throw a light behind it right away, get instant gratification, uh, and we'll talk about the materials, where I got the materials, uh, where I get the lighting and all that stuff. And until next time, see you soon. Y'all did hear me that time, right? Good night, everybody. <laughs>